In 1990, J.K. Rowling first had the idea for Harry Potter while on a delayed train traveling to London King's Cross. After five years of planning out the seven books of the series and many rejections from publishers, the first book in Rowling's series was accepted. In 1997, Bloomsbury published Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It first began, this is the thing you have to understand about Harry Potter, is that it wasn't Harry Potter. It wasn't, oh my god, Harry Potter. It was a children's book that sold to a, a, a small to mid-sized British publisher for a normal amount of money, which is to say something like 2,500 pounds. Book two sold for 3,000 pounds. You know, it, it, they didn't know between book one, but by the time book three came out, people began to realize at the publishing house that it had been printed over and over and over again, and it was selling everywhere. So, of course, by the time book four came out, it was the worldwide phenomenon that we know today. But it wasn't at the beginning, and that's one of the amazing things about publishing and about books. After the release of The Goblet of Fire, the fourth book in the series, it was announced that a feature film based on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone would be released in 2001. The film would gross over $900 million, and a new group of people would hop onto the Hogwarts Express and join the Harry Potter fandom. My sister started reading the books when she was younger, but I could never read them because I wasn't really good at reading back then. So it began for me, I was interested when she was reading them, but once the movie came out, I think I was about seven, and I watched it for the first time, and I just fell in love. It was beautiful. Over the course of the next ten years, Harry Potter books and films would be released to their dedicated fans. The final book of the series, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, was released in 2007 and sold 2.65 million copies in the first 24 hours of its release. The final film came out in 2011 and made over $1.3 billion. The craze didn't stop at the release of the last movie as fans demanded more. Universal Studios would build a Harry Potter theme park, a Harry Potter Studios tour was made available to the public, and to this day you can find Harry Potter themed places and events in every town. Well, but when you think about it though, it hasn't been that many years. It's because she continues to go on, right? Uh, we have the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. There was a play. Uh, the other thing, too, is while Hunger Games and Twilight were both very big, and they were very, very big, they were not Harry Potter big. Um, there isn't a school, pretty much, in North America that you can't go into and say, which house, which Hogwarts house would you be in, and not have some kids answer you. The truth is, though, that there probably isn't a school in Japan that you couldn't do that in. There probably isn't a school in France. That, and that's the difference. Um, but as I said, too, those are, those are continuing, right? Uh, J.K. Rowling continues to write. She continues to contribute to the Harry Potter world. Rowling continues to write short stories and new content on Pottermore, which opens up the Harry Potter stories to the new generation who live in the online world. According to Professor Gabrielle Soraldi, who teaches the Many Faces of Harry Potter course at Western University, it is the discovery of Harry Potter by the new generation that will make the story a timeless tale. And I certainly noticed that the love of Harry Potter isn't going anywhere, so when I first ran the course in 2013, the students who were taking it were the students who had read each book as it came out. You know, they were teenagers in 2007 when Deathly Hallows was published, you know, I told those students, you, know, you are the Harry Potter generation, and they knew that this was true, that they had experienced these books together in a way that you know, wouldn't be quite the same as any subsequent readers. But then what I've been finding now, you know, four years later, is that even though the students that I'm currently teaching didn't have quite that kind of experience, there's really no waning of interest. And I've done some um, events at libraries for younger children, and they are every bit as excited about this series as the people were that um, received these books when they were first published. So it's really showing a lot of longevity. 20 years later, and it seems the Harry Potter franchise is more popular than ever before.